Hey guys, uh, I want to go ahead and continue working on these cold terminal angles, just give you guys some more examples, just to solidify your understanding of them. So, we see that these angles, okay, we have to go ahead and make them um, uh, something that fits between one rotation of, of the unit circle. Now, remember, one rotation, it goes all the way around one time, so that's between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, that's one rotation. If I ask you, how many times does 4 go into 21, you're going to say, well, 5. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I want to make this into a positive uh, uh, angle. I don't want a negative, because that just makes it too difficult. So I'm going to bring it back. Um, and actually, what I'm going to do, because this is a negative angle, negative 21 pi over 4, I'm going to add, so that way I can make it positive. Now, if I, if I do 5, okay, because 4 goes into 21 5 times, 4 times 5 would be 20. But negative 21 plus 20 would give me negative 1. And I don't want a negative angle. I want a positive. So instead of using 5, I'm going to use 6. Okay? So 4 times 6 is uh, 24. So I'm going to have negative 21 pi plus 24, 24 pi over 4. And that's going to give me positive 3 pi over 4. Okay. Now, essentially what that means is that negative 25, 21 pi over 4 is the exact same location as 3 pi over 4. So now all I have to do is find cosine of 3 pi over 4. Now, I'm going to go ahead and look at my reference angle, which is pi over 4. Okay. Use my hand. Pi over 4 is the middle. And fold that one. Cosine is the top. How many fingers on the top? 2. So the answer is square root of 2 over 2. The only problem is I got to figure out if it's positive or negative. So for that I got to do, I got to figure out where 3 pi over 4 is located. So pi over 4 is in the middle right here. Okay. 3 pi over 4, 4 take away 1 would be in the second quadrant right here. And then we use all seen tacos. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. That is not sine. So therefore, it is negative. And that's it. So whatever the angle is, either you're going to add, bring it back, or subtract. And then you're going to use your reference angle to figure out um, the coordinate. Use your hand. Now, if you see number 2, you see how this is positive? So we're going to bring it back by subtracting. So 17 pi over 3 minus. So how many times is 3 going to 17? You're going to say, well, what is that, 5 times? Yeah, 5 times. Okay. I don't want to use 6 because if this was 6, then I would get 18. 17 minus 18, that gives me a negative angle. I don't, I don't want a negative angle. So I want to get close, but I want to still maintain that positive. So 3 times 5 is 15. So that's going to give me 17 pi over 3 minus 15 pi. Okay, so you subtract. That's going to give me 2 pi over 3. So now... All I'm going to do is find sine of 2 pi over 3. All right. Pi over 3 is my reference angle. Where's pi over 3? Pi over 3 is 60 degrees, which should be this guy. Fold that guy. What is sine? Sine is the bottom. One, two, three fingers in the, are in the bottom. So this guy is square root of 3 over 2. The only thing now is it positive or negative? I got to figure out exactly where is 2 pi over 3 located. Okay, so pi over 3 is over here. Okay, where is 2 pi over 3? 3 take away 1 is over here. So, all sin ta cos. Second quadrant again. Right here, only sine is positive. So, is that sine? Yes, it is. So, that means this guy is positive. Okay. All right, next one. Tangent. Okay, <clears throat> how many times is 3 going to 5? Well, only 1. Only 1. So actually, this guy is already within one rotation of the unit circle, so I don't have to bring it back because it's already inside one unit. Okay, and if you want me to show you here, pi over 3 is over here. 
okay? 3 take away 1 is 2, so 2 pi over here, 2 pi over 3 is there. And then 3 plus 2 going across is 5 pi over 3, okay? So it's already almost, uh, it's in the fourth quadrant within one rotation of the unit circle. So I take pi over 3. Uh, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. Now remember, the definition of tangent is sine over cosine. Sine over cosine. So square root of 3 over the square root of 1. So I'm going to get square root of 3 over the square root of 1. Well, what's the square root of 1? Well, that's easy. And so we're left with square root of 3 over 1, which is square root of 3. But now, right here, is it positive or negative? So remember, all sin da cos. Cosine right here is positive. That is not cosine. So automatically it's a negative. And that's your answer. Let's keep going, guys. Now let's kind of throw in a little wrench into it. Uh, <clears throat> Cosecant, now do we do the reciprocal trig ratios? Now we're still going to do the same thing. Now you have to understand that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to find sine of 13 pi over 3. Find this guy and then at the end do the reciprocal. How many times is 3 going to 13? What is that? Uh, 4? We're going to bring it back. So yeah, 4 times. 3 times 4 is 12. So now we're going to have 13 pi over 3 minus 12 pi over 3. And that's nice because that's going to give me 1 pi over 3. So now all I have to do is find sine of pi over 3. So 13 pi over 3 and pi over 3 are coterminal. They, they are the exact same position on the unit circle. Go to my hand. Pi over 3 is here. Boom. I need sine. What is sine? is the bottom square root of 3 okay square root of 3 over 2 so it's square root of 3 over 2 now pi over 3 is in the first quadrant so that's pretty much uh tells me it's going to be positive okay so i found sine pi over 3 it's positive but that's not our answer Remember, they want cosecant. So what do I do? I have to do the flip of this guy, reciprocal. <clears throat> well, that becomes 2 over square root of 3. But your professor is not, gonna, not going to allow you to leave it as a radical. So you're going to have to multiply by a square root of 3, rationalize it. And you're going to go ahead and do 2 radical 3. 3 times 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is... And this would be your solution. All right. Let's see if we can do some more, guys. Okay. Cotangent. All right. Same thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna do tangent. Okay. So essentially, what you're doing is you're gonna find tangent of negative 16 pi over three. Now, how many times is three going to negative 16, or three going to 16? Okay. Uh, that's at 4, 5. It does go in 5, but remember, if we do 5, that's going to give me 15. Negative 6 plus 15, that's a negative 1, and I don't want that. So I'm going to do 6. I'm going to use 6. And notice how it's a negative angle. I'm going to add. Okay, so I can have the, the cold terminal. Okay, so now that becomes 18. So negative 16 pi over 3 plus 18 pi over 3. Okay, now negative 16 plus... 18 is going to give me 2 pi over 3. All right. So now I have to figure out tangent of 2 pi over 3. Okay. And like we always do, look at your reference angle, which is a pi over 3. That is 60 degrees right here. What's, a de what's a, the definition of tangent? Sine over the cosine. So square root of 3 over square root of 1. So that's going to give me square root of 3 over the square root of 1, okay? And that's easy because that just gives you square root of 3, all right? Now, where is 2 pi over 3 located? So, again, uh, the more you draw it out, the more you'll memorize and uh, get used to it. 3 take away 1 is 2, 2 pi over 3. Until you're able to do it uh, automatically, and you'll be able to memorize it. So, first quadrant, all, scene, the 
course. Sine is in the second quadrant. Sine is positive. That's not sine. So therefore, this guy is going to be negative. All right, guys. Now, is that what I wanted? Nope. What did I want? I want cotangent. So what do I have to do? Reciprocal this guy. So how do I do that? Well, there's a 1 underneath, remember, from the square root of 1. So now this guy is going to become 1 over radical 3. And the negative, we can leave it on the top. We're going to have to rationalize it. So we're going to have to multiply by radical 3, top and the bottom. And that's going to give us negative radical 3 over, uh, I'll just do it the long way, radical 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. So you get negative radical 3 over 3. And there it is. Okay, secant 9 pi over 4. Secant is the reciprocal trig ratio of cosine. So I'm going to do cosine of 9 pi over 4. Okay, and because it's a positive, I'm going to try to bring it back, so I'm going to subtract. So how many times does 4 go into 9? It looks like twice. So 2 pi. So 4 times 2 is 8. So now I have 9 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4. That's going to give me 1 pi over 4. Cool. All right, so what do I do now? Remember, 9 pi over 4 is in, the exact, is in the exact same position as pi over 4. So now I have cosine of pi over 4 that I have to figure out. Pi over 4, middle finger right here. Uh, cosine is the top, square root of 2. So that means the answer is square root of 2 over 2. Good. So now i got to figure out, is it positive or negative? And remember, cosine of pi over 4 is in the first quadrant. So that means they're all positive right here. So that means this guy is positive. Is that what I wanted? No, remember, you got to do the reciprocal because we want secant. We don't want cosine. So I come over here. I do 2 over radical 2. Remember, you got to rationalize it. Multiply by the radical. Radical. And that's going to give me 2 radical 2, okay? And on the bottom, you get 2 times 2 is 4, and the square root of 4 is going to give you 2. So you can have 2 radical 2 over 2. That simplifies out. Your answer is radical 2, positive. All right? Two more, guys. Number 7. Secant, again. Secant is the reciprocal trig ratio of cosine. So negative cosine of negative 15 pi over 4. It's a negative angle, so we're going to go ahead and add. Okay, then how many times does 4 go into 15? It's uh, 4 times. Actually, 3 times, but because we want to make it a positive, so we're going to use 4. Right? So this is 4 times 4 is 16. And that will give us a positive 1, which is nice because... We don't want to deal with negative angles. So 16 pi over 4. And that's going to give me 1 pi over 4. So now all I have to figure out is cosine of pi over 4. Okay. So all we're doing, guys, is adding, subtracting, because now this angle is the exact same location as this angle. Okay. All right. Cosine of pi over 4. I think we already did that one. Cosine of pi over 4. Bend it. It's on the top. Cosine is always on the top. So the answer is square root of 2 over 2. Now remember, cosine power of 4 is in the first quadrant, so it's positive. Is that our answer? No, because we need to do the reciprocal. All right, same thing over here. So this guy's going to become 2 over square root of 2. You have to rationalize it. Don't forget, multiply the top and the bottom by radical 2. You end up with 2 radical 2 over radical 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And so we're going to get radical 2. And then on the bottom, we have a whole whole number integer of 2. Okay. That simplifies out. Your final answer is square root of 2. There it is. Okay. So hopefully it's starting to make some sense, guys. Not too difficult after you get the hang of it. Cosecant, last one. Sine. Sine of negative 7 pi over 6. All right. Let's go over here, negative 7 pi over 6. Because it's a negative, I'm going to go add so I can get my coterminal angle. How many times does 6 go into negative 6? going to 7. <clears throat> well, it goes once. The only thing is, see, there's a negative. I don't, I don't want to deal with negative. Because if I just do 1, I'm going to still end up with a negative. So I'm going to do 2. Okay, I'm going to do 2. 
6 times 2 is 12. So negative 7 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. Negative 7 plus 12, that's a positive 5. That's nice, that's what I want. 5 pi over 6. So now, essentially, all I have to do is find sine of 5 pi over 6. Cool. So now, same thing. Let's look at our reference angle. Pi over 6. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees right here. We're looking for sine. We're looking at the bottom. That's this guy, one finger. So the answer is 1 over 2. Now, I just got to figure out is where is 5 pi over 6? So pi over 6 is over here. 6 take away 1 is over here. So 5 pi over, five pi over 6 is in the second quadrant. All seen. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. Is that sign? Yes, so that means it's positive. But is that what we want it? No, we don't want sine, we want cosecant. So we have to do the reciprocal of one half, which becomes two over one, or the answer is two. So hopefully, guys, it kind of made sense. You're starting to get the hang of it. Let me know, and uh, if I need to, I'll make some more examples.